Hello everyone and welcome back to Realism Overall Sandbox in Kerbal Space Program 1.8.1. Having updated the Sujita rocket and the Lynx spacecraft, I have also decided to update the Kasei rocket, which is my big sort of response to SLS. And it is also a hydrogen-oxygen rocket. It was meant to be a heavy lift rocket. And it is capable of, well, we'll see what it's capable of because I've changed the engine stats somewhat because I've reconsidered the engines. All the engines are variants of the ED, now 9 engine, it used to be ED6. Uh, and I have decided that the ED9 would be staged combustion. And uh, so I've taken off its uh, exhaust, the gas generator exhaust, and it is now just a nice little tight staged combustion engine to get uh, better chamber pressure. And so it's also physically smaller because when you increase the chamber pressure, you can get the same amount of thrust from a smaller uh, size. However, I have not changed the mass of the engine in this case. I've kept the mass as it had been. In fact, I uh, yeah, I think I just kept the mass as it had been. Uh, but that did increase the stats of the ED9V. And so we've kept the thrust basically the same. It currently gets 4,351.7 kilonewtons and an ISP of 456. I adjusted the curve on the nozzle a bit. Uh, it was a bit excessive. The area at the bottom is the same. I just sort of scrunched it up a little bit so it wasn't so big. And of course, it's not as big as it used to be because it does have the higher chamber pressure now and is scaled down to get the same amount of thrust. So 456 second ISP on that with the fairly large nozzle. And that gets tucked into that interstage. And you'll note that previously I had the worm logo and a white rocket. And well, NASA took the worm logo idea for the Falcon 9's launching the crew to the space station. So I decided that the job of the Kasei rocket with the worm logo was done. And we are just going with the raise aer new raised aerospace logo. And the stats for the ED9 without the vacuum nozzle are 4,000 kilonewtons or about, and 385 second ISP sea level, 434 second ISP in vacuum. Again, staged combustion now, and we have five of those. So those are the stats of the engines, and we are going to see what we can actually get into orbit with those changes. Um, as far as the tanks are concerned, this is a 958.8 ton tank that is 62 tons dry. Uh, that's lighter than the SLS main tank, which is, in my opinion, a little bit overbuilt. So, but uh, heavier by proportion than the Space Shuttle external tank, for instance. Uh, so, yeah, it's sort of somewhat splitting the difference. And uh, here we have a... 19.76-ton uh, dry, 324.3-ton wet uh, upper stage, and I might reconsider that and make it heavier. <laughs> Basically, I'm nerfing some of this stuff. Uh, I'll make custom fairings later, but for now we have uh, procedural fairings, and we're going to try with a 95-ton payload first and see how that works. But this is core alone, without any boosters. So it's fairly light uh, with just the core. It's 1,428 tons, as you can see and we're gonna see what it can do. Originally I thought about making uh, reusability with the Kasei rocket and uh, with the first stage being a flyback booster. I might have a modification to still do that. I'll keep that in mind, but right now this is not recoverable. So, yep, let's bring it out to the pad and see what it can do. Okay, well, uh, we are still in the install with Principia. And I have a latent velocity here that almost always suggests that we're going to have a problem. So let me just revert. Let's try and keep it safe. I'll change the number of clamps or something. I'll move the clamps up, perhaps. Um, well, it's zero now. We'll go with that. Okay, so just a capacity test. Throttle up. SAS on. No SAS unit. Ah, well, I'll have to add that. Uh, it's just the controller on the upper stage that's controlling stuff right now. But we can run with Smart ASS, so we'll be fine. So we'll just do that immediately. Okay, ignition. Let's examine the plumes, as it were. Uh, we need to scale up those plumes, I think. I'll make a note. Fix 89 plumes. 
This is a fairly low thrust weight ratio rocket without the boosters. But basically, it was designed to be capable of launching without the boosters, obviously. And they're supposed to be RS-68 engines if the RS-68 was actually good. <laughs> so uh, that was the goal of the ED-6 and now the ED-9 engine. Okay, we should be past max Q and everything. Maximum dynamic pressure. So after this, we'll test it with the boosters. We'll put four Sajita boosters. It was always meant to use Sajita boosters. And that is part of the modularity thing and the mass production of the system. fairings are at the same time as the engine ignition there. It's not good. Okay, separation and ignition. Okay, that's fine. And fairing set. Ooh. Well, I'll make custom fairings eventually. So, with its thrust, of course, this is a very powerful upper stage, and it doesn't take very long to get into orbit. It does have RCS on it. Oh, this is very black right now. It's tough to see because of the lighting. But the RCS ports are also part of our general mass production thing because the RCS on here is identical to the RCS on the Shinkansen space plane. And that is why we are carrying some methane because the Shinkansen uses methane and oxygen RCS. And we needed the methane and a little bit of extra oxygen to supply the RCS here. Same ports. So obviously the new coloration is basically a nod to the fact that these are gonna have to be cryogenic tanks with the whole foam thing. So yeah, we have that. I didn't go full on orange, I went with peach color. I think that's all right. Okay, and shut down, 204 by 193. We have 400 meters per second left, so we could carry a little bit more than this. I would want the stage to be able to deorbit, though. Uh, though we, uh, I don't know if the RCS is sufficient for that. I think we would need another firing of the engine. The RCS is good enough for turning it, but not for another burn, uh, for actually fully deorbiting it. It's possible that we would want to get to higher orbits as well, but yeah, 95 tons is certainly doable, so we know that. Let's see what it can do with the boosters. It is possible that I need a variant of the Sajita rocket that doesn't have the logo, because that's a whole lot of the new Raised Aerospace logos that we could, we could just have it on the main rocket, it's fine. So here, with these four methane oxygen boosters, each with five ED-8 engines, we are going to attempt to carry... As I scroll up here, it's a big rocket. We are going to attempt to carry 150 tons. This is still only a 2,400 ton rocket, so it's very efficient. And let me just check what that ratio is. Uh, it's a 6.25% payload fraction, so that's extremely good. But then again, we aren't using SRBs, so that helps. What? We also have a much better thrust weight ratio now. The core only lasts a little bit longer than the boosters do. But there are worse configurations. A total of 30 engines here. So now, let's see if we can do 150 tons to orbit. Okay, well, on the pad, that's how it looks. Uh, it's a big rocket. At some point, I need to develop a new hydrogen-only stage, a nuclear stage for it. But I'll think about how I want that to work out. But for now, throttle up. There, oh, there is SAS. That's by virtue of the Sajita boosters, though. Uh, they have the SAS in them. Anyway, we'll just go with it. Ignition. And launch. No 
Okay. He can probably turn fairly vigorously with this. Now, uh, as far as uh, interplanetary transfers and transfers to the moon go, this is obviously not a necessarily an optimal upper stage for that. This is very good at putting stuff into low Earth orbit. Not so good at sending things over... I mean, it's not as good as an EUS at sending things to high orbits because its ISP is a little bit less and also the engine is very heavy so the dry mass is high though uh, EUS seems to be very heavy stage to begin with so there might be some competition there. The diameter of this is exactly the same as SLS, it's 8.4 meters. Okay, booster set. Off they go. Okay, and first stage separation, upper stage ignition, fairing separation, oh, oh that's why I should make custom fairings. And we continue. Looks like it might be able to carry a little bit more than this given how much delta V we have. I may consider making this tank heavier, I don't really need it to. Oh, well, we didn't put any... well, I mean, there is boil-off. I don't know. There ought to be boil-off. Yeah, I think I'll make the tank a little bit heavier. Okay, making orbit and shut down. 261 by 209. About the same margin left over, so any changes to this tank will basically have the same effect on both rockets. About 150 tons to low Earth orbit, so it is very capable sort of low or low earth orbit launcher. I might want I will try to add some reusability to the lower stage and it'll be in the form of making it a flyback booster. Basically making it a really huge version of the Orion carrier plane. So we'll lift off from Brownsville with this so that that stage can potentially land back at uh, Cape Canaveral and that will be the best arrangement. If there were any other two locations that would work, we could use those as well, but uh, as I said before, th that gap is practically the only ideal one as far as launch sites that come with real solar systems. So, anyway, well, that has been a test of the new Kasei rocket system. Uh, this is the new look. The sort of uh, additional pipage kind of thing, that's just baked into the texture. I'm not too sure I'm waiting on that, and uh, none, none of this is completely free from potential future changes. I'll think about it, and you guys can give me your feedback. But uh, with that, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.